Okay, we're back with part two of our Pokeball tutorial here, and let's talk about rendering and compositing. First thing I would like to do is just inside of the OBJ context here, I'll just press enter. So we get these transform handles here, and let's just transform this a bit, maybe get a more interesting composition. Maybe do negative 15 degrees on the x-axis, negative 14 on the y-axis and 3.75 on the z-axis and then i'll just come up a bit let's just frame this in a way we like and i'm going to come up to our lights and cameras tab here and let's control click this camera and this will create a camera for us based on our view let's just slightly adjust this something like this and in the camera view settings here let's make the focal length bit higher maybe 100 and reframe this again and i'm also going to control and middle mouse click on this near clipping and far clipping just to reset them to default you can also use a resolution of 1080 hd and let's create a background so i'll do a geometry node name this background dive inside let's create a grid and i only want to give this grid two rows and two columns and let's turn off this lock icon here so we don't move our camera by accident. Let's just move the background down a bit, maybe 0 0.06 like this. And let's also rotate this to match our perspective. And I'll also come here and go into selection mode by pressing the S key. Let's press the three key to enter edge selection. And let's just select the edge and in the back here and poly extrude this. But we can see that just regularly extruding this is not what we want to do. So if we press the hotkey F, we can transform this edge in a direction we want. And let's set this transform up here to global. And let's drag this edge up on the y-axis. So maybe do seven meters. And we can again go into selection mode and select our edge here. And let's bevel this. Again, I'm using the C key to enter the radial menu. Let's give this six divisions. I'm adjusting the divisions with the mouse wheel of my mouse. And then let's just go ahead and subdivide this geometry. Subdivide this twice. And sometimes for these smooth backdrops, I like to use the soft normal node. And let's output this with a null. We can probably also come back to our original grid and just move this slightly forwards. I'll just round off these numbers. Again, I'll just select our original grid and just slightly move this down. Let's come back up to our OBJ level and let's start creating some lights. Create an area light. And if I drag this into the viewport here, we can actually look through this light and that's going to make it a bit easier for us to adjust it. Let's just come back up a bit. Like this. And again, let's turn off the lock icon so we don't move this by accident. And I'm going to set the exposure to two. For our second light, I just want to make an environment light. And if we come into the environment map here, we can actually see that we have some default HDRIs that Houdini comes with. And let's choose this Skylit Garage 2K here. That's everything for the lighting. And let's talk about the materials. We are going to be rendering this using Karma XPU. So because of that, we need to use the Material X shaders. So we can press this icon here, come into our matte context. And let's create a MTLX standard surface and let's create four different shaders of this and we are going to need one material for our inside one for our button one for the bottom and one for the top and we can also create another one for our background so let's just name this background and for this background shader i'll just give this a slight blue tint just reusing some values I was using before. And I'll set the specular to 0.8 and the specular roughness to 0.8 as well. 
to assign this material to the background. It's really easy. I'll just drag this onto our background here and let go. And we can see that this is now turned into a blue color. For the Pokeball, we have to assign each of the materials separately. So let's come back up to the OBJ context, go to Pokeball, and I'm going to create a material node. And let's start off by assigning the inside material. To assign another material, I'll press this plus icon here. It's going to be the bottom. Create another material for the top. And a final material for our button here. Now we have all of our shaders assigned and let's start modifying these. The inside material here, I just want this to be like a dark gray color. For the button, I'll just give this 0.1 in the metalness and I'll leave this at default colors. And I'll use exactly the same settings for our bottom material and the top material. I'll also give this a metalness of 0.1 and let's give this a red color, maybe with a slight orange tint, something like this. If I press these different lighting icons here, we can toggle between different lighting modes. This might be the most accurate one in our case. So we are all ready to render this. Let's come into our out context and I'll create a karma node. Set this to XPU and I'm just going to choose a location to save this file on my disk. Again, let's set the resolution to be 1080p. And something I always do is come into this advanced tab here in the mplay tab and just make sure we have this mplay monitor enabled. Let's press this karma viewport button here and see what we get. I'm going to press this arrow here just to hide the settings. And this is our render view. Now to take this image to the next level, let's just close this. I'm going to enable some depth of field. How we do this is we can select our camera and I'm going to press the set key on my keyboard. And this lets us adjust the focus point. So let's focus on the front side of the ball here. And I'm going to set the f-stop to be 0.5. And to enable this in our render, we have to come back to our karma node in the camera effects tab and let's enable the depth of field here. I'll also just disable the motion blur and we can also set the samples to 256. Now a more advanced trick we can use to get really clean renders using Karma is in the image output here. Come into the albedo and let's export the albedo map. And I'm also going to come into the ray level output and export the smooth normal AOV. Let's again take a look at our render. Yeah, I think we are ready to render this, so I'm just going to come into my out here and I'll press the render to disk button here. I only am going to render one frame. And when this is finished, let's talk about the compositing. The render is now finished. To composite this inside of Houdini, we can come into our IMG context here. And this should create an image network node for you by default. But if it doesn't, you can just press tab and create an image network node. And I'll come inside and you can see I've already finished the composite. So we're going to be going over this. First of all, to actually see the result of our composite in Houdini, we have to come into the press the plus icon here and let's do a new pane tab type. And in the viewers, let's choose composite view. And this is the final result of what I made. So let's go through this node by node. First thing we do is we use a file node to bring in our render. So this is the raw render. And we can see that we have a bit of noise, especially in these out of focus areas. And if you remember, we exported the albedo and normal AOVs in our render settings. And this is where we use this. So we create an AI denoise node connected here. And this is going to take the albedo map and the normal map and use that to denoise our image. It's actually insane how well this works. Next thing we do, I use a bright node and I just adjust the brightness by 0 0.05. Then I use a gamma node and lower this by 0 0.05 just to get a basic S curve. Then I use an HSV node and I just slightly lower the saturation. And I create a node branch off to the side where I create a blur node and I blur the image by 300. And I crop this just to remove all of the excess data. 
and then I use a screen node and then I just set the background weight to something really low just to get a slight glow in our image. You can see this just lifts the image and makes it a bit more interesting. And the final thing I do is I create a shape. So this is just a circle that I created and I transform this a bit to be a bit bigger than the image. And I'm blurring this like this and I invert it and then I crop it. And I'm using this as a mask for another bright node where I just lower the edges here just to get a slight vignetting effect. So you can see that this also makes the image a bit more interesting. And finally, I export this with a ROP file output node and I just set the output image as a PNG. I turn off the image color space. And if you have ACES installed, and I'm going to provide a link for how you can set this up for Houdini, you get this LUT here called srgb for aces cg houdini.lut. It's located where you installed your aces. And I'm using that as the output LUT, and that's going to give us exactly this result when we export it. So yeah, when you are ready to export, just press render here and I'm only rendering one frame and yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.